I'm going to sing a spooky one. This is a conversation between the Grim Reaper and a soul that thinks it deserves at least one more year down here below. Whoa! Won't you spare me over for another year? Well, what is this that I can't see with those cold hands? It's taking hold of me, or oh, I am deaf. None can excel, and I will open the door to both heaven and hell. Well, I'll fix your feet till you can walk. And I will lock your door till you can't talk. And I close your eyes till you can't see this very air. Come go with me. My mother came to my bed. And she's placed a cold towel upon my head. My head is warm. My feet are cold and death is a moving on my soul. Thinking, oh, death, please consider my age. And please don't take me at this stage. My wealth is all at your command if you will move your icy hand. Singing, oh, oh, death, oh, oh, death, won't you spare me over for another year? Singing, oh, 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 oh death, oh, 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 For another year, singing wo 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 death, wo 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 death. Won't you spare me over for another year? Won't you spare these good people all over for at least one more year? Hi, Oliver. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. No problem. Um, so, uh, you're a busy guy. I know that you've been doing a number of projects lately, and maybe you could tell me what some of those projects are and some of your collaborations. Sure. Um, I'd like to talk mostly about myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I, started, I released my first solo CD uh, this year after working for most of my career in... Um, uh, you know, bands or in collaborations. Um, but in releasing my first solo CD, it, it ended up being very, very much a collaborative uh, endeavor. And I produced the CD with Adrian Dolan, who um, is a member of the Bills, but also works a lot producing and playing here in town. And that was uh, really windy, wonderful to work with him. We'd been meaning to for a while, so it was nice to finally get the opportunity to work with Adrian. And uh, I brought in um, a couple projects that had been ongoing, one called The Deep Downs with Emily Braden and Adam Dobre and uh, Josh Dixon. And we recorded a couple of the tunes off my album were, were based on, on that project. And also I have a duo project with Jeremy Penner, who's the violinist for the Waylon Jennings. So sort of brought everything, all my colleagues and companions in under one tent and made an album called In a Big Machine that we released in February. Excellent. Sounds like a good project. Um, you've been working with these people on separate projects for a number of years, had you? Some of them for many years, yeah. Uh, some of them for, for many years, and then uh, and some of them just over the last year or two. Um, and then once the CD was released, we put the band together and started working with a young guitar player by the name of Quinn Bishand. Uh, and I, we had never worked together uh, before this project, so a mix of old and new. Um, can you tell me who some of the influences are for your music? 
I know they range far and wide. How much time do we have? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you know, I um, I'm a bit of a sponge, and I, I do uh, try to take inspiration from a wide range of recorded music and and live music that I hear here, you know, in town or around around where I'm traveling, but. Uh, you know, uh, if I was to put a few names out there, Roscoe Holcomb mm -hmm. is uh, a wonderful mountain singer, who, and, and Ralph Stanley from those from that tradition. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Martin Tielli of the Real Statics, and uh, uh, some of the newer bands I've been listening to um, have been like uh, Fleet Foxes and Joanna Newsom. Those are kind of the new ones that I like, but uh, I'll, I'll listen to just about anything that's playing. I try to I try to find a nugget of something I like in everything. Wow. So what are some of the processes you go through when you write a song? Uh, you know, gosh, it's kind of the same. Like, I, I'm, I'm just not good enough to waste any potential opportunity to create a piece of music that I'm going to want to sing. So if I get a little idea here or there, um, whether it's a lyrical idea or a musical idea, I just go for it. And, and that also, that same philosophy applies to why I think I'm drawn to doing cover tunes and traditional music. Uh, I just can't turn anything down. I don't have that many uh, opportunities to, to rock. The boy who can't say no, huh? <laughs> I'm somewhat of the boy who can't say no to music. Yes. <laughs> um, so you're involved... Among other things. Dot, dot, dot. Um, so you're involved in the Folk West Festival, and uh, can you tell me a bit about the festival and uh, who's going to be coming and when it all happens? It's going to be August 19th to 21st, and uh, we are, uh, it's at Royal Athletic Park, and tickets are available uh, throughout the city at Lyle's and Larson's Music and Hemp and Company, but also online on our website at folkwest.ca. Uh, and now that we've got that out of the way, we are so proud of every single artist that's coming. Like, I really believe that every performer we've booked is fantastic. However, there are some names that might be more well-known to, uh, to the viewers. Uh, our, sort of our marquee headliner, I guess, is Ron Sexsmith, mm -hmm. a wonderful singer-songwriter, incredible depth and diversity in his writing. and. Uh, he was recently the subject of a documentary that was released uh, earlier or late in 2010 called Love Shines, which is just a really compelling, beautiful um, documentary. But his most recent work was also shortlisted for the Polaris Prize. And um, uh, Barney Bentall is coming as well. And uh, local, some local greats like uh, the Bills and Dan Lapp are going to be there. And we've got a couple artists that, uh, or C.R. Avery is coming and Fish and Bird, and there's like really too many to list. You know, Rick Scott is coming. Um, and then there's a couple bands that, that may not be well known to the viewers, like uh, Joy Kills Sorrow, which is just starting to really take the folk music scene by storm, and they're out of Boston, and they're a great, uh, a great sort of chamber folk ensemble. And if, if, if your viewers don't know what that means, I don't blame them. Yeah. It's just a kind of a name for fancy folk. Okay. And they're very fancy. <laughs> they do these amazing fancy things with their voices and with their fingers and their arrangements are very eclectic. Are they, are they dressed up in a very fancy way as well? Um, they look pretty cool. Okay, good enough. But they're, they're a young band too. They're all uh, students from Berkeley uh, University in Boston, uh, which is a really interesting ethnomusicology program that's producing a lot of great players. So uh, uh, yeah, they look, pretty, they look pretty fancy. Seems to me that there's a, a huge range within what we call folk. Um, I know there's some varying influences in your own music. And uh, what, what are some of the components in folk today? I guess it's anything and everything. Well, you know, I, I think that you can look at, um, I think you can look at folk music in a folklorist perspective. Uh, and a lot of times uh, that music was geographically and then thus culturally um, isolated in some way. So if you've got a fiddling tradition from Newfoundland, it was something that evolved in Newfoundland for hundreds of years without a lot of outside influence, uh, likewise with the Appalachian Mountains or like the blues singers of the Delta. Um, 
But I think what it's come to mean in the sort of modern era of music listening, which where uh, your average person's iPod will have um, music from around the world and, and going back up to 100 years back in time, uh, maybe it's come to, to mean something that's a little bit just more grassroots to indicate that the artists that are the exponents of either whether they're singer-songwriters or fiddlers or, or maybe they're hip-hop dancers or, or whatever they're doing, they're coming from some kind of grassroots cultural community that exists somewhat independent of the music industry and of performance, uh, or in, uh, especially of the industry, you know, that's just sort of naturally like frothing up in the community, whether it's a rural or an urban environment, but that, that in these sort of frothing, boiling, <laughs> cultural, baskets that are existing all around the world, that there are gonna be people who are gonna come out of those and, and we try to find them in FolkWest. We wanna find those people and present them on a, on a big stage in front of lots of people because we think that their music is just as exciting and interesting as, uh, as any of the big stars out there in the world who are enjoying lots of success in the industry. So do people then uh, apply to you guys at Folk West? Do they send you samples of your music and yep. stuff and say, hey, check this out? And yep, that's what they do. They send us stuff, and then we also are kind of diligently seeking out uh, artists. And, um, and so, yeah, we try to make sure uh, no stone is unturned because you never know who's out there, who's around the corner. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And I know um, after we uh, say our farewells, you will be playing another piece of music for us. Great. Do you know what you're going to play for us uh, tonight? Um, no. <laughs> okay. But uh, uh, maybe I'll do Cactus Land. But maybe not. <laughs> we wait with bated breath. Thank you very much, Oliver.
Take the head hammer to the captain. Make him see, make him see. Take the hammer to the captain. Make him see. Make him see. Hammer, hammer. Kill John Henry. Let him know. Because he's skiing, whoa.